Right, mock exam feedback. I'm not going to go through the first question in any great detail. It's only four marks, but basically social structure regards those different roles. Um, one of the main mistakes that many of you made was you wrote about the Norman social structure, and you were writing about tenants in chief and villains, uh, where I was asking you about the Anglo-Saxon social structure, which is kings, earls, thanes, churls, peasants and slaves. And it says to describe some of the social structure, you needed to really to describe two points. So you could have said what the Thanes did, could have said what the Churls did. Um, for the 12 mark question, you need to really, if it's a subject knowledge thing, get yourself on the website, get yourself to the succession crisis bit and listen to the videos. But you needed to write three paragraphs. Two paragraphs you could have got loads of marks to be fair, but for perfect you'd have three. And if it was me, you know, I'd have a paragraph on Edward not having a son and why that was significant. Um, and, and that paragraph will probably tie in with the fact that there was no customs for if the king didn't have a son. I'd do a paragraph on the ambitions of William, Harold and, and Harold and say, look, if there was only one person who wanted the throne, there wouldn't have been a succession crisis because that person would have just been the king. And I might have done a paragraph about the wealth of England um, and how that made it really attractive to people. Um, all of these things all are on the revision website, they're on the sh sheet that I made for you. And also you need to get yourself on there, you need to look for that information, you see how you can write yourself three paragraphs. For the last question, 16 marks. That's half of your paper for that last question. So you should have written more than you did for the other questions. You needed to have an introduction, paragraphs, conclusion. And you, you got a choice. Why did William win the Battle of Hastings is choice number one. Do a paragraph on luck. It was just bad luck for Harold Godwinson that he faced invasion twice from opposite ends of the country within one month. It was also bad luck that the fleet was damaged in a storm in the Channel. So there were no English ships to try to attack the Norman ships as they crossed into England. Um, what else could you talk about Harold's mistakes? Of course, Harold chose to march the whole length of the country once to defeat the Vikings, and that worked. And he thought, well, it worked last time, I'll do it again to try and beat William. But of course, his army was incredibly tired when they arrived at the battle, um, and, and it was a bit of a mistake. He could have waited to rest his troops and waited for more reinforcements, because he was fighting at home. Um, so that's one of Harold's biggest mistakes. Again, it's all on the revision sheet. Um, and then I'd probably do a paragraph on William's excellent generalship. Maybe his best thing was the feigned retreat. His trick to get the Saxons in their shield wall at the top of the hill to leave the shield wall and go down the bottom of the hill where the cavalry would sort them out. What two of you wrote about a Norman shield wall? They didn't exist. And it was a Saxon shield wall at the top of the hill. Normans used the feigned retreat to break it down. Maybe another one of William's great decisions could have been he got the Pope's support. He recognised that the Pope and getting the Pope's support for his invasion would gain him more volunteers to come on the invasion. Because if you die doing the Pope's work, you're going to heaven. Um, and the people respected, looked up to the Pope, so it gained him a lot of support for his cross-channel invasion. And also probably increased the morale of his troops a little bit going into battle. There's just the flavour of some of the things with that one. But you could have chosen the other question, which is how did William keep control? Castles was one way that he kept control. His bold, decisive leadership again, like with the Battle of Hastings, was important. He almost always went there, straight to the rebellion, and sorted it out. People were clearly fearful of him, because the rebels mostly ran away whenever he turned up, or just surrendered and gave in. Um, and also, I'd talk about the lack of coordination of the rebels, and the lack of a recognised leader. Edgar the Athelim, he was the best they had, and... You know, he wasn't necessarily an inspiring leader before the, all these rebellions. Otherwise, he'd have been chosen as king. He was, he was a young, young man, really, more than anything else. And you know, when you take into context text, there was 2 million Anglo-Saxons and 7,000 Normans, I believe is the statistic, which you'll find on the sheet. You think, well, if, if all 2 million had decided, all those rebellions that all happened all at different times in different parts of the country, all happened at once... The Normans would have been overwhelmed, they would have struggled to stop it, that could have been a successful rebellion, but they didn't coordinate things, and therefore, that could be one key reason why they lost. So there's some specific things, but as I say, I'd urge you to look on the website.